In this video, we'll talk about making a change of variables in a quadratic form so that we can rewrite it without the cross product terms. In our previous video, we learned that quadratic forms are polynomials with terms of degree exactly 2. Now these polynomials can be expressed in the form x transpose times a times x, where a is an n by n symmetric matrix, and x is the vector of variables x1 through xn. We also learned that symmetric matrices are orthogonally diagonalizable. So suppose that Q is the quadratic form given by X transpose AX. And suppose that the symmetric matrix A has the orthogonal diagonalization PDP inverse, where the columns of P are orthonormal. Now let's define a new variable vector Y consisting of variables Y1 through Yn and let y be defined by p inverse times x. Now since the columns of p are orthonormal, we can think about p inverse as p transpose. So here, y can also be rewritten as p transpose times x. Now let's return to our quadratic form. Our quadratic form was q equals x transpose times a times x. Now what we can do is substitute my diagonalization in for a. So I have x transpose times pdp inverse times x. Remember that we define y to be p inverse x. So making that substitution here, we can rewrite our quadratic form as x transpose times p times d times y. Now we can make another change. Next, the matrix P here can be rewritten as P transpose transpose because when I transpose a matrix twice, I get back the original matrix. So I can write this as X transpose times P transpose transpose times the diagonal matrix D times Y. Now grouping the two transpose terms together, we have P transpose X transpose times d times y. Now remember that p transpose x is also y, so this becomes y transpose d times y. So originally my quadratic form is written in terms of the variables x1 through xn, but by the end of it we are rewriting it so that it's in terms of the variables y1 through yn. So I've made a change of variables here. With this change of variables, we have y transpose times a diagonal matrix D times y. Now, if we were to multiply this out, what we'll see is that there are no cross product terms. One thing to note is that when we're making the substitution y equals p inverse times x, what we're essentially doing is we're making a change of coordinates. Remember, when we previously learned about change of coordinates, we had this change of coordinates matrix PB and the relationship x is equal to pb times the b coordinate vector for x. In our situation here, we have x is equal to p times y. So if b is the basis consisting of the columns of p, then y is essentially the b coordinate vector of x. So when we make the change of variables from x to y, we're essentially changing from the standard coordinates to b coordinates. Let's now look at a concrete example. In this example, we have the quadratic form Q equals x1 squared plus 4x1 x2 minus 2 x2 squared. We want to make a change of variables to rewrite Q without cross product terms. So the first thing that we want to do is rewrite Q in the form x transpose times A times x. That means we want to find the matrix of the quadratic form A. Since Q has only two variables, A is going to be a 2 by 2 matrix. The diagonal entries of A are the coefficients of x1 squared and x2 squared. The coefficient of x1 squared is 1, so the first diagonal entry is 1. The coefficient of x2 squared is negative 2, so the second diagonal entry is negative 2. Now the 1, 2 entry and the 2, 1 entry add up to the coefficient of x1, x2, which is 4. Since A is a symmetric matrix, I know that the 1, 2 entry and the 2, 1 entry are the same, so they have to be 2. 
So once I have the symmetric matrix A, what I want to do is find an orthonormal diagonalization for A. To diagonalize A, I need to find the eigenvalues and their corresponding eigenspaces. First, let's find the eigenvalues. So we want to look at the determinant of A minus lambda I and set it equal to zero. So A minus lambda I is one minus lambda, two, two, negative two minus lambda. So the determinant of this would be one minus lambda times negative two minus lambda minus two times two, which is lambda squared plus lambda minus two minus four, which is lambda squared plus lambda minus six, and set it equal to zero. Factoring lambda squared plus lambda minus six, I get lambda plus three and lambda minus two. Set that equal to zero. So my eigenvalues are lambda equals negative three and positive two. Now let's find the corresponding eigenspaces. For lambda equals negative three, what I want to do is find the null space of a minus negative three i. A plus three i is the matrix four, two, two, one. This row reduces to one, one half, zero, zero. So my eigenspace is the span of the vector negative one half one. Now, if you want to avoid some fractions, you can multiply that eigenvector by two and say that this is the same as the span of negative one, two. Now let's find the corresponding eigenspace for lambda equals two. So I want to find the null space of a minus two i. So a minus two i is the matrix negative one, two, two, negative four, which row reduces to one, negative two, zero, zero. So your eigenspace in this case is the span of two, one. Now, if we simply want an orthogonal diagonalization, then we have the diagonal matrix D with entries negative three, zero, zero, two, and our matrix P would be negative one, two, then two, one. But what we need is an orthonormal diagonalization. So what we need to do is divide the columns of P by their lengths. So our diagonal matrix D is still negative three, zero, zero, two, but our orthonormal matrix P is now negative one over root five, two over root five, two over root five, one over root five. And since P now has orthonormal columns, I know that the inverse of P is just a transpose of that matrix. So next, what we want to do is make a change of variables. Let Y be P inverse times X. Since P has orthonormal columns, this is the same as P transpose times X. And this substitution is the same as saying X is equal to P times Y. So here we'll say let Y equals to P inverse or P transpose times X. So that's negative one over root five, two over root five, two over root five, one over root five times X, which we can rewrite as Y one is equal to negative one over root five X one plus two over root five X two and Y two equals two over root five X one plus one over root five x2. Equivalently, we can think about this as x equals p times y, or x equals negative 1 over root 5, 2 over root 5, 2 over root 5, 1 over root 5. In this particular example, p and p inverse happen to be the same, but that's not going to be true in general. So here, the relationship is x1 is equal to negative 1 over root 5 y1 plus 2 over root 5 y2, and x2 is equal to 2 over root 5 y1 plus 1 over root 5 y2. Now, what we've worked out previously was that our quadratic form Q, which used to be written as x transpose times a times x, can now be rewritten as y transpose d times y. So that's y1, y2, 
times the diagonal matrix D, which is negative 3, 0, 0, 2, times y1, y2. So that's y1, y2 times negative 3y1, 2y2, which is negative 3y1 squared plus 2y2 squared. So notice that with these change of variables, we no longer have any cross product terms. So that's it for this video. In our next video, we'll talk about classifying quadratic forms.